Hey beauties and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Darissa Rain, aka Riri, and I love indie brands. I know you're tired of hearing that, but after today, you don't have to hear it anymore. Um, today is the final installment for this go-round of my Indie Spotlight Week, and today's Indie Spotlight is Juvia's Place. Juvia's Place is a cruelty-free brand created by Chichi Iburu in 2015. She is a Nigerian-born wife and mother of two. She created Juvia's Place with $2,000 and the dream to represent African culture and art. All of the products through Juvia's Place are meant to work on even the deepest of skin tones. Okay, beauty, so I hope that you learned something about Juvia's Place that you did not already know. Um, I've really tried in this series to not just say, okay, hey, here's the price point, or here's this, or here's that. I feel like it's more about the personal representation of the brand. So I love Juvia's Place. I have loved them since they launched. I have had many, many palettes throughout the few years. Um, right now, I only have two. I've gifted some. I've bought a million of them. They do sales all the time for like 40% off, and they're already cheap. But even right now, like I have palettes put back for my sister and for my niece because they are both beautiful women of color. And that is what this brand is kind of geared more toward is definitely being more inclusive, being black girl friendly, being pale girl friendly. They literally run the gamut of all shades. So I love that. I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think, I hope that kind of continuing on, you know, in time that more brands will continue to do that and start doing that and really pay attention to, you know, anyone that's not kind of in the midstream, if you will. Like, I mean, I can walk into any store and find my shade. You know, people that have very, very fair skin are not that lucky. People that have very deep skin are not that lucky. So I love that the brand is definitely geared toward, you know, being inclusive and being chocolate girl friendly. And they are so pigmented. They're very inexpensive. Now, when I say, again, not to ever shit on ColourPop, I love the brand as a whole. I love their aesthetic, their packaging, their price points. I just feel like their shadows are not the greatest. But you guys have heard me before say, if I'm going to spend 10 or 12 or $14 on a palette, it's going to be Juvia's Place because they deliver. So I'm going to use the few products that I do have from Juvia's Place. I definitely would like to try more products from them. So I have the, the Warrior by Juvia's and the Masquerade Mini. And because I've been kind of doing more color recently, I'm going to go super neutral today and I'm going to go into the Warrior. I do also want to speak to the quality of the packaging. Even though you would look at this and feel like it feels slim, you know, flimsy or light, it does not. It has some, you know, it's very substantial. Um, the artwork is always beautiful. They are always um, African queens and princesses and things like that. So I love that aesthetic as well. Um, they do not have a mirror. You guys know that doesn't bother me. I don't care. I have my mirror here. So they are stunning. The pan size here is absolutely ginormous and it is just honestly a basic neutral palette, but any skin tone can use this. I will say that if you have very, very fair skin, you may wanna reach into kind of a, you know, a compatible palette to go with this. But I mean, you can, I mean, you can really build this up. Look how dark that is. And their foiled shades, you guys, are incredible, insane. Um, they, I mean, the pigment is here. Again, gonna <laughs> spend the money and, you know, be in that under kind of $20 price range in regard to palettes. I'm reaching for Juvia's Place. I'm sorry. They are head and shoulders above ColourPop when it comes to, you know, quality and kind of color payoff. Again, I'm not down in ColourPop. I love their Super Shock shadows. I love their highlights. I love their blushes. I love everything. I, their, you know, Pretty Fresh collection is one of my holy grails, but their palettes to me are just okay, just like Morphe, just like BH Cosmetics. And we all have our own preferences and there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to be using the Warrior palette today. As you see, I have Nakey Nakey skin. So I'm also gonna be going in with my Juvia's Place. It is the I Am Magic Velvety Matte Foundation in the shade Capri. Um, and if you're looking at me and say, well, bitch, I got dry skin and Doris, I know you got dry skin. It is such a beautiful finish on the skin. And I feel like as long as you're hydrated, you know, prior to makeup application, you will not have any issues with this. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's about down to here, and this is in my panning drawer. I love it that much. I've also recommended it to many people. Um, so I'm really excited to show you guys, and I will do a kind of before and after and get up close and show you guys. And then, and then I also have 
Another panning project uh, product. It is the Serafina blush from Juvia's Place. And it is the most intense, beautiful, gorgeous, orangey, peachy terracotta shade. I love it. I used it all summer last summer and I will definitely probably pan it this summer. I'm hoping to. That's the goal. So I will use those products. Um, and what I'm going to do is do kind of real time, kind of show you how they're performing and then we'll speed up a little bit. And then I will do the other products that are not Juvia's Place, obviously off camera. I do want to make a little spotlight as well really quick to this IT Cosmetics. It's your Brush Love Instant Brush Cleaner. I have a full size and this little one. Um, and I just want to show you guys, I take forever to wash my brushes and I hate washing brushes, hence having hundreds of brushes so that I don't have to wash all the time. But I just want to show you guys, this is the Hank and Henry brush that I used um, in yesterday's video. Actually, you'll see this two days, you'll see this tomorrow. So two days ago video. Um, you see how intense the pigment is on there. This stuff is fan flipping tastic. I was like, I need to find an alternative. I need to find something that is not going to take me an hour standing at the kitchen sink. Okay. And it's fine and you got to do it, but this sanitizes, cleans them, conditions them. It smells nice and dries in under a minute. So y'all watch, watch this magic. Okay. We have it. You can see how dirty it looks and it literally takes a few sprays. So I just sprayed a few sprays. My towel's right here. Matter of fact, let me hold my towel up. And then we are just going to take the towel and then go back and forth with it. I'm also going to kind of clean the ferrule of the brush. Oh my God, that stuff's so cool. So you can see there's still a tiny bit on here. I could probably put a little bit more spray, but and I mean, it's, it's instantly dry. There's no pink left on it at all. I could go to my lid right now and you don't see anything. So I just wanted to kind of say that. Let me kind of finish cleaning it. But I just wanted to let you guys know, like if you've been on the hunt like I was for just kind of something a little bit easier um, and not to say that I'm still not going to do, you know, my monthly cleanings or every two weeks cleanings on Sundays because I will. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. God bless America. That is, I, you guys have got to try this. I've also heard that the Cinema Secrets, I think it is, um, does kind of the same thing. I have not tried that one. But this was like on a little like special on QVC plus six easy payments because y'all know mama's cheap and broke. So I just thought it was worth mentioning that, that it's, I mean, it's incredible, incredible. So I just wanted to say that I'm going to hop off real quick and clean these other three brushes. I'll show you what they look like prior to me going off and cleaning them. And then we're going to come right back. Um, I'm going to be using my Luminous Putty Primer from e.l.f. Y'all have put a dent in this damn thing. Like I... I love this stuff so much. Um, I will say, I feel like if you have extremely fair skin, I do notice when I put it on, it leaves a little tinge of a yellowy gold cast. Um, you don't really see it, see it on my skin, but if you have very fair skin, you're going to see it. So just maybe blend it out a little bit more or do like a little spot test and see how you like it. So I'm going to clean my brushes. I'm going to prep my skin and I will be RB. All right, beauties, I am back. I wanted to show you my little brushes. So again, with that first one, I could use just a little bit more to show y'all, but I just wanted to mention that because um, life is going to be so much easier <laughs> with that brush cleaner, cleaner. So I also went a little heavier in my T-zone with the putty primer just to show you guys kind of that little, I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera, but it has like just the slightest little kind of gold sheen to it, to it, to it. Um, and matter of fact, I'll put some kind of thick on my hand and just show you guys. I just want, you know, I always want to try to be as transparent as I could possibly be. Okay. Yeah. I think you can, I think you can see it. So you can see that when it's kind of thicker, it has, it puts kind of a gold cast. So I just want you guys to be aware of that. If you have very, very fair skin, um, it's, it may not be as flattering and just maybe blend it out extra well. <laughs> so we're going to go in. With the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Velvety Matte Foundation, all pricing will be right here. And this is the shade Capri. I have to say, this brings back a lot of memories for me. Oh, and I use, that's probably way too much. Um, it is a very thick, velvety type of um, kind of consistency. If you guys remember the old school um, Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse or something like that. It was something like that. Um, but it's very kind of moussey and fluffy the way that that was. Um, and this is slightly too deep for me, but I did not want to order another shade because I know literally in a month, 
you know, I'm going to be out in the sun and my skin is going to obviously get a little darker. Um, but it's hard when you order online. <laughs> but it blends out beautifully. There is no strong fragrance or anything like that. Um, I just, the coverage is insane. It's beautiful. And y'all know I always kind of start here where I need extra coverage and then kind of really pounce, you know, get it into the skin really well first and then I kind of start my blending process. But I love this stuff and it's, I mean, it's very, very inexpensive. And again, they have a million shades, which I love and appreciate. Um, it wears well. Again, I will say because it does dry down slightly more matte, like right now it kind of looks more skin-like and more satin-like. Um, but it definitely does dry down a little bit more matte than this. But it feels so soft and so satiny and silky on the skin. Um, and as long as I, like I said, I you know make sure I moisturize and stuff like that. Um, sorry, I have a hair. <laughs> um, that I don't see, you know, any issues with it at all. I really, really, really love this foundation. I'm actually intrigued to see too kind of how it wears during the summertime because it is a little bit of a thicker formula but I love it. So again, ignore, you know, the shade. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. So I'm going to lean up a little bit. So you can definitely see that it hides all the redness, any kind of acne spots or anything like that. So I will do the other side and I will be RB. All right, beauties, I am back. We have both sides done. I did bronze up just a little tiny bit, not really bronzing, more contouring-ish. Um, and I just went in with these two shades from my little hourglass palette. Excuse the guy across the street doing his yard. Um, that always happens. Anybody else? Um, so yeah, I just went pretty light because the foundation obviously is slightly towards the work. And then of course I went on with my Urban Decay brow blade because I love it. <laughs> so I'm going to go in with the Warrior palette. And I'm literally just going to do something super neutral and maybe add like a little bit of a black. And then um, I am going to insert swatches from this palette as well. I just want you guys to see how incredibly pigmented and beautiful these are. Um, which you'll obviously see with the look as well. So I will do one eye with you guys in real time and then we'll hop off and then I will do the other eye. So the first, and I'm going to butcher these names and I humbly apologize. I mean, honestly, just put them on the screen because I'd never want to disrespect anybody and not know how to say it. So I'm going in with this shade right here first. And just with a big fluffy brooch. Um, again, if you have very, very, very fair skin, you may want to dip into another palette. I mean, I still feel like this could definitely be a transition shade for someone else. Like, I mean, it just doesn't really show up. It's just there to help things blend. And this is just a fluffy Alamar brush. I ended up getting another set because I like these brushes so much. So in the box, they pop-up had them for like $10, y'all, I think. 10 or 12 um, I was like, oh, yes, let me, let me get some of those. And I'm actually, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and dip into this shade right here. And very softly with the big fluffy brush, go in between the original shade and this one. And add a little something to the brow bone. And this shade can be very, very blinding. So that's why I'm mixing it kind of with both and using a fluffy brush. So just to like very softly kind of highlight that area. And then I'm going to go in with this brush right here. It's an Elizabeth Mott brush, I think. Yes. <laughs> and then I'm going in with a shade right here called Kano or Kano. And it's kind of a beautiful, rich caramel tone. Um, there's some kickback in the palette. It's not, it's not drastic or anything like that. But you guys know that doesn't bother mama. Okay. And I am just going to put this all the way in the crease. Oh, I love this shade. Oh, it's almost like veering on, you know, like a mustard shade. Like this with a beautiful mustard shade would be absolutely phenomenal, I think. And then, I mean, the, the pigment's there. It is, 
it's beautifully pigmented. This is obviously, be, you know, being a more neutral palette, perfect for any eye color. I know I complain sometimes about having brown eyes. I'm like, oh, brown eyes, are, they suck. But, I mean, when you have brown eyes, you can wear any eyeshadow. I mean, you can go, you know, neutrals, warms, cool tones. You can go absolutely, you know, batshit crazy in regard to shadows. And then you guys know I like to pull the shadow out. And I always hold, I know I get slack for how I hold my brushes. I don't know why, but I do. But if you hold it at the very bottom of the brush, you know, the furthest point away from the actual brush itself, the hairs, it applies the least amount of pressure. That's why I tend to kind of hold my brushes like that. And then instead of kind of coming up and packing and using more tension, so to speak, I just get a more firmly packed brush, if that makes any sense. I'm going back into our original color. And I'm just going to softly diffuse. And then back into that kind of highlight color. Again, softly, because it's, it's really... It can be really intense. <laughs> and then I'm going to go into an even finer brush. This is the Hank and Henry one. I am going to continue to use them because I liked them so much. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into the black. I know. I know it's scary, y'all. I know it's scary. Well, it's not black. It's like a, it's almost black. It's such a dark espresso brown that it almost looks black. And it is very, very pigmented. So be careful. And I'm going to add a little bit at a time and kind of put it in this outer V. And then I'm also going to take it to my bottom lash line. And now these are one of those pigments you guys hear me talk all the time. I don't care if a palette is $2. I'd rather spend the extra money and have something that I know is going to last on the lids. Like staying power for me is more important than almost anything in a palette. Um, you know, above color story, above anything. If it's the most beautiful color story I've ever seen, but it's garbage and it, you know, doesn't stay on the lids, it disappears within an hour, like I'm not... I'm not going to use it. So then essentially I wasted that $2, you know, as opposed to something like Juvia's Place where their palettes are, you know, $14, $20, things like that. I am getting my money's worth and they are super pigmented. Again, some kickback that does not bother me. You know, I mean, if you want to do your shadow first, do your shadow first. I don't feel like it's enough to warrant me doing that. Oh my God, that's so pretty. Oh. And they're very, I mean, they're very buildable as well. You can layer them up. They don't get patchy or weird or muddy or anything like that. I just, I love them. I mean, especially, you know, kind of what she represents and what the brand represents. Their price points. I mean, everything. The artwork. I love everything. I love everything about Juvia's Lace. So that is where I'm at. I'm going to do this eye and then we'll come back and then I will do the metallic shades. All right, beauties. Both eyes are almost done i freaking love it so i am now going to go into the shade i'm again going to put it on the screen right here and we are going to put this on the inner corner and i'm just using a little tiny pencil brooch Ooh. it's so pretty Oh yeah, that's really beautiful. I love it. And I think I'm going to go into Amina. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that one right. Right here. And then I will show you what she looks like. And of course I will do swatches as well for you guys. So I'm going to go into the Amina. Press that. Oh my god. Oh! Right here. In the front half. And you guys, that's dry. With a finger. And then I'm going to go in with a little kind of flat brush. And this is just to kind of 
just make it look a little more clean. And then I'm gonna take this brush and just kind of really softly wiggle it between the matte and the shimmer. Oh, that's pretty. I mean, guys, this, this is a $20 palette, okay? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Ooh. And again, you, I mean, you could wet it and it would be way more intense, I'm sure. And I'm trying not to come all the way to the inner corner just because I want to see the variation between that color and this color. Oh, that's pretty. And then again, I'm going to kind of just softly wiggle it. Oh, yeah. I love it so much. Okay, I'm going to try something. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, it does. <laughs> um, I'm going to spray with some Pretty Fresh. Just two little tiny sprays. And I did do this off camera as well. You guys know I always spray between, you know, kind of powder products and stuff like that. I'm going to get up close and show you guys the level fallout real quick as well. Again, that doesn't bother me as long as they perform. But I'm going to try to use Moremi as a highlight. I think it'll work. We'll see. I'm going to go less is more, kind of. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Okay, that's beautiful. Oh, my God. That's really pretty. And I'm lightly tapping, you guys. Oh my god, that's pretty. Yeah, I like that. I just want, I want a little, a little juice, just a little something, something. Oh my god, that's pretty. So that is the Warrior palette. And then I'm going to go into my Serafina blush. You guys have already heard me talk and talk and talk about this blush. I absolutely love it. So that is what it looks like. I will do a little swatcheroo. Let me show you what it looks like. I'm so not good at swatches, y'all. <laughs> so I, in the summertime, will take or did all of last summer, like literally all of last summer. I would take my Ofra All the Lights highlight and this. I would swirl into like the entire pan of the All the Lights and then tap into this. And I would bronze up the skin. Y'all know I live for a good bronzer. And then I would go and do what I just said and then kind of take it all over. This is very heavy, heavily pigmented. So less is more. Tap the brush. <laughs> and it is absolutely stunning. Very long lasting on the skin. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay. And y'all, I mean, y'all know I love I love blush. I love a corally, peachy, terracotta. My hair is getting on my nerves. Blush. Especially during the summertime, just kind of mixing the blush and the highlight together is so mother effing beautiful, you guys. Oh, I love this. <laughs> mm, I love it. And then I typically take just an open fluffy brush and kind of take everybody down just a little bit in case it went a little crazy on anything. Oh my God, that makes a beautiful highlighter. <laughs> so again, just something very soft and very neutral. I'm going to go off camera because again, this is supposed to be about Juvia's place. Um, and I'm going to be using my NARS lipstick in the shade American Woman. I will come back with that. And then also, you guys would have seen me use these pretty much in every look for my Halloween week. But as the little Ardell magnetic lashes with the gel liner. Um, just because this is so neutral and I want to switch it up just a little, a little bit. Um, but you would have already seen these. I did not do a review or kind of come on and show how to use them or anything. Because that was kind of during the time where so many brands were launching magnetic lashes. And a lot of bigger YouTubers were doing them. So if you want to actually see me do a full review, like no makeup on, just kind of showing just these, how to apply them, things like that. Um, 
let me know, but they're very inexpensive and they work well, especially if you're like me and you're blind as a bat and can't see what you're doing. Okay. So we're going to pop on lips and this and a little coat of mascara and then I will be our B. All right, beauties, here is our finished look. Um, the NARS lippy was a little too pink for this look, so I did add some of my Dose of Colors Desert Suede on top just to make sure that everything matched and was cohesive. I hope that you learned something about Juvia's Place that you did not already know. I hope that you guys go check them out. Of course, you'll see swatches as well. Um, but I just, I love, of course, indie brands, but I love brands that are also, you know, inclusive and empowering to others. So... I love the brands. I think they're phenomenal. I think they're amazing quality. The staying power is there and the price point is perfection. So thank you beauties so, so much for bearing with me through my indie spotlight. <laughs> and, um, but I am definitely on the path again to trying new brands this year. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed indie spotlight. I love you all so, so much and be your own best beautiful. Bye beauties.